Well, welcome to my video today. Today I want to be having a look at how to install one of the Lightwave RF radiator thermostat controllers, or uh, sometimes known as a TRV, a thermostatic radiator valve. The first thing I want to do is to explain basically what it does. Uh, this gives you individual control over each radiator in the house, and therefore you can zone all your rooms separately and control the various room temperatures. Now this is part of the Lightwave RF product range and to use this properly you're going to have to have uh, a Lightwave hub in the house uh, that controls all the devices in the house and also control of your boiler via a switch uh, and an overall thermostat uh, for that as well. Now the price of these uh, varies but I would find that about £30 should buy you one. You will see them retailing as high as £60, uh, but £30 should be a target price for that. Uh, I'm going to work my way through uh, how to install this. Uh, I've already installed one previously and I'm quite happy with it. Uh, toe in the water, so uh, now I'm going to do a few more. My philosophy on this is at £30 installing uh, this on all 15 radiators in the house is a little bit expensive, pushing up towards the £500 mark. Uh, but my thought is, as I decorate a room, uh, I'll add a thermostatic radiator valve uh, to each one. Therefore, sort of spreading the cost a little bit and taking control of each room bit by bit. Now, the assumption is that before we start, that your radiators currently have... Uh, normal manual thermostatic radiator valves before we automate them. Uh, if you don't have that, that's going to be a bigger job because you're going to have to upgrade your man your manual valves to, th to the uh, manual thermostatic radiator valves. Uh, we'll have a look at those in a minute, uh, but the first thing we want to do is to just unpack this and see what we actually get in the box. So as we unpack it, See that we have the radiator thermostatic controller itself. Lift that out. Uh, there's just three lights on it and three buttons on it, and there's a space for the batteries as well. Now the batteries aren't included with this, so that's two AA batteries you're going to need also uh, to complete this installation. Now, in addition to that, there is a couple of fittings uh, that are supplied, and these are what actually attach it uh, to your radiator. There's also some glossy literature in it, but they really point you to uh, download the latest instructions uh, for installing it. So they, there isn't really instructions as such with them, so you will need to download those instructions. Now the next thing that we want to do is to uh, remove the current thermostatic radiator valve, the manual one. It should look something like this. Uh, and normally you adjust it as such, setting the temperature you want the radiator to run at. Now some people may be a little bit concerned it's going to get a little bit wet when they take this off. That's not the case. Uh, these, the bit that you're taking off is really just a control knob. Uh, the rest of the valve uh, will remain here. Now to remove them, they do vary, but a common method or a common type that's used is this one. We just rotate this back ring. As we rotate that, that will pop off. And that's all we do. Now that's the valve off. And if you look closely here, the valve control off. If you look closely here, you'll see just a little pin, and that's how this valve works. By moving that pin in, closes off the valve, and releasing it out, opens up the valve, and obviously how far in, how far out that is, uh, determines the amount of water flowing through the radiator, and therefore the heat of the room as well. Now we're just going to pause that for a second, uh, while we bring down our new valve. 
Now there are two little bags that I showed you earlier with accessories. Um, these are for various uh, types of valves. Open then the first bag. Uh, you can see there's a number of little pins uh, and, and this adapter here. Um, we'll just look at how they're used uh, in a little while. Another thing here is the piece that uh, fits onto this radiator. So just hold on and we'll have a look at that in a moment. Now the next thing you have to do is to work out which adapter that you need for my own radiator is this one. There's a little ridge inside here uh, that wants to fit in this recess on the valve and then we'll tighten it up. It splits like that, or stretches like that. You push it on and you want to make sure it really sits well back uh, on that. When that's done, there's a screw and a nut up the back, screw in the front, and run that in, not over tight, just firm, and then we bring on uh, the control section of this. Now I'm not going to fit the batteries at this point. And I'll just come to that in a moment. I'll just leave that off and that just screws on. Now as you screw it on, just it can end up at whatever angle you want it. You do want to be able to see these indicator lights and access the buttons easily, so just Certainly for the minute we'll leave it like that, or you can see them. Next stage is to fit the batteries. Now, it would have been easier to fit the batteries uh, before we fitted the radiator valve, but uh, first of all, we're going to have to be able to change the batteries from time to time anyway. There is an indication uh, on the controller, uh, on your phone, on the app, uh, when the batteries are getting becoming low and they change so you need to be able to change them anyway uh, but secondly the more importantly is that this radiator uh, controller um, calibrates for the moving the pin in and out it gets to feel how far how large your pin is and how far it needs to move in and out to control the radiator it does that when a new set of batteries are fitted so I'm just going to fit those now Off the little cap. In with battery one. In with battery two. And you'll see the lights come on. And if you listen very carefully, you may be able to hear the motor run. I've heard in some reports um, that people find this noise a little bit annoying. I have to say, I've had no problems with it at all. Uh, operating in the bedroom, I don't really even hear it at night. Any little movement you get like that can be quite reassuring. Now, if you've owned thermostatic radiator valves, the manual type, for some time, you will know that that little pin um, in most makes have a history of sticking. Um, this Lightwave RF device uh, has a little trick up its sleeve where whether you switch on the radiator or not um, every day it exercises that valve in and out to keep the little pin uh, from sticking so that's just a nice additional trick as well it takes about a minute or so for this to calibrate and uh, when it does so i think green light uh, comes on to indicate that everything's complete with that yeah, there we go. There's three buttons. There's the on-off button in the centre. There's a boost button that will turn the radiator on for uh, a period of preset period of time. And then there is this link button uh, to link it up to the system. So that's the physical installation done. Very simple, very effective. Um, and the next part that we're going to look at is how to set it up um, with the app. 
So it has just completed calibration, as you can see, and uh, the little light has went out. So as I say, next step is to uh, set up the uh, app and start taking control of this. Uh, as I say, first thing to do will be to uh, pair that uh, with the rest of the system so that the system knows what it's connected to and what it's doing. The next step that we want to do is to link the radiator valve uh, to the uh, Lightweb RF system. So to do that, uh, we go in and start the app, which I've just done on my tablet. Hit the plus sign there to add something. Tell it which room we're going to uh, add it to. So we're in the lounge, so we're going to add it to the room in the lounge. Hit the next button, which is down at the bottom, just out of view at the moment. I have to give it a name, and I'm going to call it Lounge Radiator. No end at all to my imagination there, but that's obvious, isn't it? Next, and it says it's ready to pair. So to pair it, we go to this little dot of a, a button in the middle here, just in here. And when we press that, we should have these two lights alternating and flashing. The amber and green, okay? And then we go back to the app and we ask it to pair. At this point, it tries to pair up and initialize that. Let's try it again. Okay, got it that time. Don't know what happened the first time. But we now have the lounge radiator uh, set up. As you can see, the lounge radiator is now completely set up. Uh, it gives the current temperature, the target temperature, the output that is how much the valves open or closed and uh, a battery condition indicator at the bottom. Now next thing I want to do is to uh, control the temperature of that. So if we just tap that valve, we go into uh, the set temperature option. So I'm going to set the temperature down to, oh, let's say just 15 degrees. Okay, and I'm going to uh, do that now, and it's starting, the command is gone, and you can see that, the, that we've now gone to off, and you can possibly hear the uh, motor just running back on the valve until that turns that off. When I go back into the control panel, you'll see now that the target is down to 15 where I set, and obviously it's measuring the current temperature as well. Now, for fun, we're going to go in and see if we can uh, add this to uh, Google Home, uh, sort of voice control on the radiator as well. So I'm going to just open up the Google Home app, and I'm going to add devices. Uh, and what I want to do now is just select that, and I want to add devices. Check for new devices. Now I thought it best not to show you my password uh, for getting in, um, for obvious reasons, so I've just jumped past that. And I'm going to add device. I've got nine devices on it, so it's got it. So let's just jump back to uh, the 
light wave RF app and see whether we've got any control just watching that bottom item there <coughs> uh, across Google. So, okay, Google, set lounge radiator to 23 degrees. Sorry, it looks like that device hasn't been set up yet. Just open the Google Home app and go to Home Control to add a device. Sometimes when you add a new device, uh, it'll take a little while to recognize it. The command to force that to happen is as follows. OK, Google, sync all devices. OK, all right, syncing devices for Lightwave RF. Just give that a few seconds to complete and we'll just try it again. OK, Google, set lounge radiator to 25 degrees. Sure, setting the lounge lounge radiator to 25 degrees. Just watch the app. You can see now that the green light has come on up here. It's starting to move. And uh, yeah, there the, the app has jumped up and is active. You can see now that it's got a target of 25 and the output is moving towards 100%. If you've enjoyed this little tutorial on setting up the Lightwave RF uh, thermostatic radiator valve that uh, zones each of your radiators. Please watch out for my next videos, thanks.